Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel Bio Explorer. I am Vimu Jarak. This is an educational channel and it will be very useful to improve your biological knowledge. Today in this video we are going to discuss about cell theory and cellular organization. Cell theory. Cell theory was introduced with the attempts of few scientists made for the scientific study of cells. We all know that all organisms are made up of cells. It is the structural and functional unit of life. The level of organization of matter represented by a cell shows all the characteristics of life. Any stage below the level of a cell cannot be considered as living. The three tenets to the cell theory can be mentioned as first one. All organisms are composed of one or more cells. Second one, the basic structural and functional unit of organisms is the cell. And third one, all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Now let us see how scientists contributed for the discovery of cell theory. Robert Hooke. He was an English scientist. He began the scientific study of cells known as cell biology. The cell was first discovered by Robert Hooke in 1665. He examined a piece of cork using a simple microscope and discovered a multitude of tiny pores. He named the mass cells. The meaning of the cell is cellulose, that is, the six-sided cell of a honeycomb. But Robert Hooke was unable to observe the subcellular structures like nucleus and other organelles found within a cell. He described about his observations in his book called Micrographia. Anton van Leeuwenhoek Anton van Leeuwenhoek was a Dutch businessman and scientist in the golden age of Dutch science and technology. He was a contemporary of Robert Hooke. He is commonly known as the father of microbiology. He was the first to describe and record living single-celled organisms like Euclina and bacteria and named them as animalcules. He made use of a microscope with improved lenses for his observations. Anton van Leeuwenhoek also found the sperm cells of humans and animals for the first time and was able to see blood flow in capillaries. Matthias Slider He was a German botanist. He studied about plant structure under a microscope and concluded that all plants are made up of plant cells. He included his ideas and wrote contributions to our knowledge of phytogenesis in 1838 when he was the professor of botany at the University of Jena. Theodor Schwa He was a German physician and physiologist. In 1839, Theodor Schwann concluded that animal tissues are made up of animal cells. Schwann's theory and observations created a foundation for modern histology, that is the branch of biology which studies about microscopic anatomy of biological tissues. From these conclusions about plants and animals, first two tenets of the cell theory were postulated. Just one all living organisms are composed of one or more cells and the cell is the most basic unit. Schwann's other contributions to biology are discovery of Schwann cells, pepsin, organic nature of yeast and defining the term metabolism. Radolf Virchow He was a German physician and pathologist and a biologist. He is known as the father of modern pathology and as the founder of social medicine. Radolf Virchow showed that all cells arise from pre-existing cells by cell division. In 1855, Radolf Virchow added the third tenet to the cell theory. All cells arise only from pre-existing cells. 
the modern version of the cell theory includes the following ideas. Energy flow occurs within cells. Hereditary information is passed on from cell to cell. All cells have the same basic chemical composition. Cellular organization. Cellular organization is the organization of organelles that make up the cell and how they are arranged inside it. According to the cell theory, the cell is the basic unit of life. Based on the organization of cellular components, all living cells can be divided into two groups as prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Now let's look at the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Organisms Prokaryotes are bacteria and archibacteria. Eukaryotes are protists, fungi, plants and animals. Cell size Average diameter of a prokaryotic cell is about 1 to 5 micrometers. They are much smaller and more simple and have a large surface to volume ratio that is the surface area compared to its volume that means nutrients and other waste products can be exchanged rapidly between the cell and its surroundings. The average diameter of an eukaryotic cell is about 10 to 100 micrometers. They are larger in size and have a complex structure compared to prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells have a smaller surface to volume ratio, meaning nutrients can't diffuse rapidly to the interior of the cell. 4. Prokaryotes are mainly unicellular, that is, they compose of only single cells. Eukaryotes are mainly multicellular, they are composed of two or more cells. But most of the protista and some fungi are unicellular. Evolutionary origin Prokaryotic cells were evolved around 3.5 billion years ago, while eukaryotic cells evolved from prokaryotes about 1.8 billion years ago. Cell division The prokaryotic cells usually divide by binary fission, no mitosis. Meiosis is not needed because prokaryotic cells contain only one set of chromosomes that means they are haploid. Eukaryotic cells may contain a single set or two set of chromosomes so they can be haploid or diploid. Therefore, mitosis, meiosis or both take place in eukaryotic cells. Genetic material DNA of prokaryotes is a single double-stranded circular molecule associated with a few protein molecules. It lies free in the cytoplasm. This region is called the nucleoid. Nucleoid is not bounded by a membrane. There is no nucleolus. Eukaryotes have double-stranded linear DNA associated with histones and other proteins. Those DNA are contained in chromosomes within the nucleus. Nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear membrane and has a nucleolus. Types of ribosomes Prokaryotes have 70s ribosomes which are smaller and are made up of 50s and 30s subunits. Both 70s and 80s ribosomes are present in eukaryotic cells. 70s ribosomes are found inside mitochondria and chloroplasts. 80s ribosomes are larger and composed of 60s and 40s subunits. They are found freely in the cytoplasm and may attach to endoplasmic reticulum. Organelles There are only few organelles in prokaryotic cells. They are not surrounded by membrane, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, Vacuoles are absent. Internal membranes are scarce. They are the infoldings or extensions derived from the cytoplasmic membrane. But if internal membranes are present, they are usually associated with respiration, photosynthesis and 
nitrogen fixation. A great diversity of organelles can be seen in eukaryotic cells and they are membrane bounded. Nucleus, mitochondria and chloroplasts are bounded by two membranes. Lysosomes, vacuoles are bounded by a single membrane. Cell walls. Peptidoglycan is present in bacteria and cyanobacteria. Archibacteria have protein and polysaccharides in their cell walls. Plant cell walls usually contain cellulose and chitin is found in fungal cells. Eukaryotic cell walls are never composed of peptidoglycan. Animal cells do not have a cell wall. Flagella Prokaryotic flagella have a simple structure. Usually, they are not surrounded by a membrane. They lack microtubules. Diameter is about 20 nanometers. There are no cilia. Eukaryotic flagella have a complex structure with 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules. They are surrounded by a membrane. Diameter is about 200 nanometers. Respiration Respiration is done mostly by mesosomes in prokaryotes. They are folded in vaginations in the plasma membrane. The electron transport chain in the cytoplasmic membrane contributes to the production of ATP. Eukaryotes use mitochondria for aerobic respiration, which produce ATPs, that is the energy carrier, in all living organisms. The electron transport chain contributes to the production of ATP molecules. It is located in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Photosynthesis It takes place on internal mm. membranes which show no stacking as in eukaryotes. In eukaryotes, photosynthesis takes place mainly in chloroplasts. Chloroplasts contain membranes which are usually stacked into lamella or grana. Nitrogen fixation. Some prokaryotes have the ability to fix nitrogen. None of the eukaryotes have this ability. Now let's see certain basic features that all cells share. They are all cells are bounded by a plasma membrane which is a selective barrier. Within the cell have a semi-free jelly-like substance which is called cytosome. Subcellular components are suspended within the cytosome. They carry DNA as genetic material. Ribosomes are found in all cells. So that's for today. Hope you enjoyed this video and gain a lot of interesting facts about cell theory and cellular organization to your biological knowledge. So please subscribe this channel and click the bell icon. See you in the next video.